My name is Ron Candelaurel, um, and I uh, first first learned about and saw the uh, Sling 4 in uh, the Copper State Fair two years ago, 2017, and met Jean de Austinville. Um, when I saw the airplane, I had to go up and talk about it, and uh, he sat me in both the Sling, well, he, he, uh, he showed me the Sling 2, and then uh, I looked at the Sling 4 and I said, what about that one? He brought me in and sat me down and uh, told me the process of the build and uh, I was pretty impressed with pretty much everything they had told me. And so I, uh, I took the brochure uh, that he had and when I returned home I did a little more research and thought that this might be the airplane I want. I was, I, I've been wanting to upgrade, so um, I didn't have this plane in mind until I saw it. And now this, I, when I saw it, I said, I think this is the one that might be my airplane for, for my mission, um, which is, uh, I like the golf, I like the bike, I like the camp, and oh, by the way, I do, uh, uh, animal transport for uh, rescue uh, facilities. So I and uh, so I I was there in November and December. I I ordered my airplane, and so when I was ready and I ordered the airplane, uh, they sent the empennage in a box to me, and uh, they had started the process to the build the quick build kit, the imp, the fuselage, and the wings in South Africa. So somewhere around the middle of December, I received my empennage kit. I mean, yes, my empennage kit. And I uh, picked it up in Sacramento and brought it to my airport where I was then based and proceeded to build the empennage. Well, it, it took me uh, over a span of a month and a half, and I calculated I roughly 73 and a half hours to build the empennage. Um, and, I, and I started with the rudder and, and all the empennage parts. Um, after that, it was just a wait, um, because I was done at the, the end of January, middle to end of January, and I didn't receive my quick build kit until April. I was in the middle of my empennage build and I got a call from Barry J. Um, asking me, well he, he first told me that uh, Mike Blythe, they were building an airframe for the TSI, the new 915. And they realized at some point during the build that the airframe that they were basing it off of, which was the Sling 4, they didn't make any changes. They realized that it was going to exceed the VNE or the, the maximum speed for, for this airframe. So apparently, and I don't know all the details, but apparently they stopped the build and Mike said, uh, apparently Mike didn't really know what to do with the empennage or the uh, fuselage, so he had Barry call me and ask me if I wanted it. They did all the work, uh, which, which uh, en entails all the rivets from the firewall to about the first third of the uh, canopy is, is all countersunk flush rivets. And uh, he asked me if I wanted it. Uh, Mike doesn't want to charge you, he just wants to know if you would like to have it. And I said, yes, I'll, I'll take it, sure. So they, they continued with the build there with the same, imp uh, I keep saying empennage, but uh, with the same fuselage. As far as the color goes, yes, it looks uh, looks a little bit of a like a military airplane, and I want it to be different. I wasn't intending it to look like a military airplane, but um, I I was very partial to the grays, and I wanted to have a gray color. I had uh, my color chart from a uh, a paint company, and uh, I wasn't. I had other colors in mind, but, but generally speaking, I wanted the, I wanted the gray. And I had, a, had another uh, uh, 
accent color in mind, but I, I ultimately decided I wasn't going to do that until after I saw this, this color. So uh, I basically chose one color, and it's called Polar Gray. Uh, the paint company is called Super Flight, uh, and they make a, a great aircraft paint. And so uh, when, when I saw the plane with my own, first, my own two eyes, it was exactly what I thought it would be. Of course, the, a darker paint in, in sun, whether you're driving a car, or whether you're flying an airplane, it's going to attract more heat, it's going to retain more heat. I, I don't believe that it's, it's going to have any effect on, on the performance of the airplane or it, it, could, it could maybe create a little more heat, but like I said, I don't think it's dark enough to do that. Um, just like most guys or people that fly airplanes like this, when, when you have a lot of glass, you would uh, probably put a shade up or, or two to, to reflect, the, reflect the sun and keep the heat out. So, well, the, as far as the engine goes, um, you know, I, I owned a Cessna 150, 100 horsepower Continental uh, engine, and, you know, I could toot along 100 miles an hour, 115 miles an hour. Um, and at some point, after about six, seven years, I decided that I, want, I was probably going to upgrade. And like I said, I was going to upgrade. Um, and when I saw this, this is definitely an upgrade from a Cessna 150. Um, the, the engine is 115 horsepower, 914 uh, Rotax turbo. And um, with this engine, at least for the first five minutes in flight, you can have that 115 horsepower. Uh, a great uh, climb rate and uh, once you level out you're at 100 horsepower uh, constant uh, performance. This obviously is going to be you know it's definitely an upgrade and not only in appearance and cost but um, in performance so you know uh, I haven't flown this yet obviously but I have flown in their TSI and I flew their demo uh, plane and it it gets up there in, in speed compared to my 150. So I, uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a VFR pilot. I love the, f but I do fly a lot. With my 150, I average 130 hours a year. So I anticipate doing at least that with this because I'm going to be able to go longer distances. Um, and you know, as as far as the uh, uh, affordability, as far as the maintenance and the. Uh, uh, Consumption, gas consumption, it's not going to be much more than what I was consuming in my 150 with this 914 turbo. Uh, they expect between five and six gallons an hour, depending on how I fly, probably closer to six. We, 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 are, we are getting close because I'm working on the interior and uh, uh, there was a plane sitting next to me. As a matter of fact, there was that plane back there, that red and white one, or I mean that orange and white one. Um, they were doing exactly what I was doing about, well, it was a couple months ago. And uh, uh, I'm, I'm at that point and hopefully beyond. I, I'm anticipating another a month and a half, month. We're, we're almost there. Um, you know, it's just the interior work, which is tedious and time consuming and just, you know, a lot of work. I would say for anybody who wants to build their own airplane that um, after you know it's, it's been agreed upon that you want to buy one, that you, you just need to make sure that you have the budget for it. Just like anything else, many people can start it but then they run out of money. So I would expect that you did a little research, um, anticipate, just like building a house. You know, you can go get an estimate on building a house and it's probably going to cost you a little bit more. So when you build an airplane, you're going to have unexpected expenses. You know, if you're if you're prepared financially to meet the commitment, and I would you know I would say go go for it. But if not, if you're not sure if, if it's too much money, then you need to lessen your expectations.